I had three goals in mind. Make it cheap, make it scary, and make it work. I knew some of these puppet making techniques existed, but I'd never tried them before. In this video, I'm going to explore some of those techniques, but I'm also going to show the sculptural process and how I made feathers and all that as well. When I first started sketching everything out, I knew I had a lot on my plate, but my first big hurdle was figuring out the mouth mechanics of this thing. So this whole section that includes the top of the mouth cannot move. But the bottom of the mouth, that's the part that pivots. Then you have your spring that has to be strong enough to keep the mouth closed at all times until you pull it. Then when you get the balance right, it works pretty well. When I felt good about the mechanics of the mouth, then I knew I just needed to start sculpting the beak so I could test it with the weight of what the beak would end up being. I'm really just going for it here looking at pictures of Shoebill Stork and just kind of getting scrappy with some chipboard. Using some watered down Elmer's glue, I just start doing like a paper mache with some craft paper. Because really what I'm looking for is just to build up some strength so it holds its shape. Pretty happy with the size of the beak compared to the mechanics of the mouth and I think it'll work. I used spackle on the beak to give it an extra layer of texture that was a little bit more controllable. One of the main reasons why I decided to do the beak and the mouth first in this whole process I knew that it would be really important that the mechanics of the mouth could support the weight of the beak and still be really functional. I used PVC for the basic skeleton of the bird. I made this jig just to make sure that all the joints were cut the exact same way. If there had been a larger budget for this, I probably would have used a different material that would have been a little bit stronger, but um, it worked pretty well for this. This is basically what all the joints look like. It was just a bolt and a nut. You'll notice that I use springs just to create some tension for some of the joints. I actually ended up projecting the correct scale of the shoe bill on my wall. So at any point in the process, I could just kind of roughly reference the size of any particular part of this bird. Here's an example of creating some tension for a joint. Because the balance is kind of just right, whenever I move it, it kind of just holds its place. It doesn't necessarily snap back into the original position. Next, I swung by my local bicycle repair shop and grabbed some brake cable. And I had these ferrules laying around in my scrap bin that I could use as stops. I was really excited to try this because I had never done this before. So I just 
kind of went for it. I drilled one hole all the way through the wood here, and then I took a larger bit and just went in like a quarter inch, and just fed the cable all the way through. Then I fed the cable through the casing and pushed it all the way up into the wood, and it stops. It looks kind of similar on the other end. You can see here that when I close the mouth, it pulls the cable. Again, I'm going for simple, cheap, and effective here, so I'm just using scrap wood and scrap PVC, and then I'm just crimping this ferrule on there. And look at that, it works great. Okay, just to recap here, these are the static areas. And then you have these other pieces that actually move. And for the controller, you wanna make sure that the cable's long enough for the correct range of motion that you need. And then this is where the casing stops. So the cable's able to freely move back and forth from the control to the mouth. Exploring a few different ways to do the wings, but this is roughly what I came up with. Using PVC and the same joints that I was mentioning earlier. All I'm doing here is using springs to create tension and to hold the wing in place and then using the cable in the best possible place to create the movement. I needed feathers on a budget, so what I did was I grabbed a pad of paper, grabbed a bucket, poured some India ink in there, watered it down, and used a chip brush to create some texture. Then I created a file on Illustrator and started cutting out feathers on my Cricut machine. really great about painting the paper first is that whenever you cut out all of these feather strips you're gonna get so many different variations in shade and they layer really nicely on top of each other I ended up using a little bit of spackle to kind of beef up parts of the beak This was about 3 a.m. the night before the video shoot. Time was running out.
this point, I felt pretty good about him. I had about 45 minutes that I could sleep before I had to wake up and roll him out to my car. Imagine looking out your window at 5 a.m. and seeing some dude roll this out to his car. But we made it. Go check out the full music video for Animals. I put the link in the description. It was a real honor to make this puppet for this project. See you next time.